minutes uh, for the April 25th, 2018. Uh, and uh, I'll second it. Any more discussion? Comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, abstract. So I'll make a motion to accept abstract number 18. They did May 2nd, 2018, and abstract number 19, they did May 9th, 2018, as presented. Second. Any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any abstentions? We carry unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we have no amendments. We did have some modifications, so I'll make a motion to accept the budget modifications as listed. Second. Uh, any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any abstentions? We pass uh, unanimously again. Thank you. Um, I know that we had uh, last at the last meeting we had uh, uh, our veterans coordinator uh, Bill Meyer um, address us about uh, the veterans meetings and our outreach program uh, that will continue this year, uh, as well as our senior outreach program. And then we talked about. Uh, the honor flight, and uh, I met last night with one of the directors of the honor flight, uh, Jim Key, uh, here last night. Uh, great meeting, and I think, uh, unfortunately, Jim is not coming. Okay, so uh, Bill, can you talk to us a little bit about honor flight? This is something that I think all of you will find of, of interest or know someone who could be interested in this. Supervisor, members of the board, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as you recall, last uh, meeting I uh, gave you a brief uh, report and I also mentioned uh, Honor Flight, and I'm here this evening to provide some more information on this very valuable program. Uh, Honor Flight is actually a national program, started in, in 2005, it was our first flight. And it started in 2005 after uh, the uh, World War II monument was built in DC. and. Uh, it came to the attention of folks that there were a lot of World War II vets uh, who were not able to attend. I mean, this was 60 years after the end of World War II. And they were very concerned that a lot of the uh, World War II era vets were not having an opportunity to get to D.C. to see the memorial. So a group started uh, the flights, started uh, modestly in the first couple of years, and has now grown to a, a proposal, a pro program that has 130 uh, uh, spots in the country. And Syracuse, the uh, Iron Flight Syracuse is one of those spots. Uh, each one of the flights out of Syracuse is done twice a year. Uh, it handles approximately 80 veterans per flight. Uh, the flight costs uh, around $30,000. So obviously it's a major undertaking. They've uh, gathered a number of sponsors, uh, not only the big corporate sponsors, but a number of uh, smaller contributions, uh, literally from uh, everybody around the community. Uh, that being said, they still want to uh, address one very valuable part. The one valuable part is, well, every time there's a flight, like there was just a few days ago, there's a great deal of attention to honor flight. However, what happens after a couple days, you know, it kind of dims. And people say, well, that's nice, but how do I participate? How can I join the next flight? So that's what we're doing now. We're having literally outreach programs on honor flight to make sure that everybody who's eligible uh, can attend. Now, eligibility. They're obviously trying to focus primarily right now on the World War II era vets and the Korean vets for obvious reasons. However, um, there are going to be circumstances where it could be vets from Vietnam or Afghanistan or whatever who may be in a very severe medical condition. They're trying to make sure those folks get to have a line as well. So 
Every uh, veteran is uh, invited to attend. You do not have to be wartime service. Anytime you're in uniform, you know, they would like to have you go. Uh, again, locally, uh, Iron Flight Syracuse started in 2012. Uh, again, they're doing two flights a year. Uh, it has a very large uh, base of uh, volunteers. But again, the emphasis right now for this evening and uh, all through the county is to do the outreach part. Uh, I've given you all some of the information on the program, uh, starting out with the application and a volunteer sheet. I highly encourage you to be one of the volunteers. I, I gotta tell you, after you've been on Honor Flight, this will be in the top 10 of things you've ever done in your life. Um, I took my <coughs> now 97 year old mother, she's a World War II guy, um, on the flight a few years ago, and she said to me, Bill, you know, you were really getting on me hard to go on this. And I was really getting a little upset with you because you're really getting on me. And when I dropped her off at her place that night, she said, you were really doing it, but I'm really glad you did. Uh, every single veteran who goes on this has the same story. They'll say, well, I'm not really the important one. There are a lot of people who did a lot more than I did. But anybody on any team like this knows you need everybody on the team to be able to get the mission done. So I'm uh, out here doing the part for the veterans in Cicero and Cicero area. Uh, I would hope that you would you know, join the effort and be a, a, a guardian. You don't get to wear the red shirts like the veterans get. You get to wear the kind of yellow, green ones, OK? But you get to go to all the monuments. And you actually get to go to Arlington. And Arlington, if you've been to the, uh, the unknown and see the change in the guard, that, again, it's going to be one of those top 10 items that you ever remember. So I, I strongly urge you to, uh, to attend. Now, forms are nice, but nice colors are, are good too. Uh, the supervisor and the clerk have both uh, agreed to post their information. And just so you know, the clerk has been on the honor flight and has been a guardian. So if folks come to town hall, look for information, she's a, a real living example of somebody who's been there. And so here's the poster. We're going to have a poster up. Uh, here's a little you know, tear-off thing on the bottom so you can pull off the numbers so you can get more information. In today's world, of course, they have a website. So uh, not only do we do the old-fashioned uh, phone number and the, and the posters, but we do the, uh, the website type information. So with that being said, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, Bill, just a quick question. How, um, how do you reach out to uh, a lot of the veterans that are unaware of this? Well, you hit exactly on the, on the head we're trying to get at, uh, Councilor. This is, this is the thing we're trying to do. And what we found out is there was a disconnect for the ones who see the flight and then, and then said, well, geez, how do I do it? And that's what we've done. Said, geez, there's a problem. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> and hopefully you will all help with this. So if, if you want to go, I, I greatly encourage you to do it. But you may have a friend, neighbor, relative, you know, who invites you out. Ask you to just take this and pass along. The clerk will have extra copies, and I'm more than happy to run the copy a few more times for you, so you can have copies and you know, pass them. Sarah, most of the veterans obviously there is somewhere that you they receive notification of it, or uh, the opportunity is given to them. How do you notify the veterans? Um, I'm not very subtle about this stuff, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm out uh, working with a veteran and their family on other issues, whether it's uh, veterans benefits or being able to go to the VA for services or housing issues, uh, this is one of the tools in my toolbox uh, to tell them about this. And I know um, my experience dealing with all of you, I, I can, I'm fully comfortable saying that I'm counting on you and I have no reservation that you're going to be out Every time you see somebody you think may be an advocate or, or <coughs> might participate, that you'll help us. But we have to have community leaders like you all doing it, okay? Because I'm just one, okay? And the other folks are just one. But uh, you guys know a whole lot of people around this community. And so that's why I'm here you know, in front of you to help spread the word. Okay, thank you. We, um, we are going to, uh, I'm going to ask David Kirk. Our website and Facebook coordinator to uh, um, post uh, information on our website and also on our Facebook page 
and we are um, honored tonight to have a representative of the local newspaper, uh, Ashley Casey, who I'm sure would take some information with her as well. And we're going to send you some pictures in a, in a news, we'll uh, come up with a news clip for you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. One, just one last comment on this. What impressed me last night in our meeting was that it's not just the World War II veterans. And, and the World War II veterans, my dad was a World War II vet. Um, I'm sure that you have family members who served in the Second World War. But they're, they're, they're passing away, unfortunately, at a very high rate. Uh, but they are looking now at, at Korean War veterans. And there's a lot of people from my era, uh, the Vietnam veterans, uh, who if they had uh, suffered medically or they were injured, uh, Agent Orange or whatever, uh, they will be considered for this flight as well. So everybody knows somebody that, uh, that could possibly benefit from this. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, we'll now have a public hearing to consider the adoption of a local law, which would be local law number four of 2018, the installation of a no parking sign at the end of Grandview Drive. And that's critical for garbage trucks and snowplow turnaround folks, I guess, are parking there and uh, it's making a, a hardship uh, for our snow plows and also the garbage trucks. I have proof of publication and posting. Uh, I'll open the public hearing now and anyone who would like to speak either for or against uh, putting a no parking sign at the end of Grand Rue Drive, I would ask you to come up and <coughs> support now. There being none, I will close the public hearing. Uh, I think we'd be in unlisted action for the purpose of secret compliance and note the action requires uh, action by no outside permitting agency outside the town. The proposed installation of no parking sign at the end of Grandview Drive uh, it will, have, uh, will not have a negative impact upon the environment and therefore does not require the preparation of a draft environmental impact statement. Second. Uh, any comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Any abstentions? I'll now move for the adoption of resolution to consider uh, the installation, not to consider, we're going to install it, the installation of a no parking sign at the end of Grandview Drive, critical for garbage trucks and snowplow turnaround to be known as local law number four of 2018. Second. Uh, any board comments or discussion? Are there being none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Thank you. The uh, police building uh, bid award I move for the adoption of a resolution to award the bid for custodial services to the new police department building to immaculate commercial cleaning at a pay rate of $600 a month, effective May 16, 2018. Second. Any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any abstentions? We carry unanimously. Thank you. Move for the adoption of a resolution to approve $2,688 to Central New York uh, Veterinary Service for Dog Control Service Budget Code A35104. Second. Any board comments or discussion? Um, Mark, we had to pull this off. Did you clarify what this was? Yes, uh, this was an oversight on the bill. Um, uh, Mrs. Castleman uh, pulled the, the bill for us and it was an oversight when we voted on it. There was a charge, an additional charge. Uh, it was, I'm not gonna say it was hidden, but it was, it, it was not included in the bottom line. It was above the bottom line and it's there for you to see. So uh, basically we overlooked it. Are we being reimbursed for this also? By this, the restitution being paid through my, probation? My understanding uh, from the court clerk is all this went in front of Doug, um, Judge DeMarche, and Doug DeMarche um, assessed the convicted defendant or the perpetrator uh, the entire amount. So what happens with this is that the county, Onondaga the County, collects the money, and then after they've collected the money, probably after we're all gone, uh, that they will reimburse the town of Cicero. Well, he has to pay it through the course of his restitution. Yes, yeah. misdemeanor is three years, so it's going to be paid back over three years. Yeah. So we're not getting it this year. Right. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, any other board discussion? Uh, did, we, uh, did we take a vote on that already? No. Okay. Uh, then, um, uh, anyway, Vern made the resolution. You did second. we get a second? You seconded it. I seconded yes. it. Any other? Any other board discussion? I'm sorry. Uh, there being none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Any abstentions? 
We pass unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Hybrid Garage Project. Move for the adoption of resolution to approve the payment of $31,685.92 to MRB Group for professional services during the March 18th through April 14, 2018, on the Hybrid Garage Project. We also have. Uh, yeah, I'll second. second. I'll second. Yeah. Second. yeah. Uh, any board discussion? All well, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. What's nay? Any abstentions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Move the adoption of resolution to approve $526.50 to MRB Group for the bidding process for the sewer extension for the highway garage project. Second. All those, uh, any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. Any abstentions? We carry unanimously. Thank you. Site material purchase for the highway. Whereas the Town of Cicero Board here and after referred to as the Town Board intends to construct a highway facility at 6658 New York State Route 31, Town of Cicero. A site package was prepared and the bid in advance of the building package. In addition, quotes requests were sent out to the vendors and suppliers for materials that would be installed by the site contractor previously awarded the project. Whereas the town requested quotes for the following materials, geotextile fabric, sanitary and stormwater sewer piping, precast concrete structures, stone and asphalt. The total cost of the bid materials is $433,195.25. Water supply for the materials, excuse me, water supply for the facility will be as it is not a state bid item and the quotes exceeded the uh, procurement threshold. The alternate cost of the materials, which is primarily to increase hard surface area on the site, is $241,997.90. Determination on the alternate selection will be decided at a later date. I would mention that the threshold is $20,000. That's why it doesn't have to go up for state bid. Whereas a summary of the quotes are attached, noting a low quote in each respective category, and the respective contractor, the materials will be delivered to the site or hauled by the site contractor, stone and asphalt, for use in completing the site work required for the facility. Note that stone and asphalt quantities are estimates and may change slightly. Whereas each supplier and vendor will be required to enter into an agreement with the town, no payment will be made until materials are delivered to the site. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board accept the quotes for the base bid materials totaling $433,195.25 and enter into agreement with the respective vendors and suppliers. The alternates at a cost of $241,997.90 will be considered at a later date and may be approved pending evaluation of the total cost of the full project. The town board further resolves that the supervisor be authorized to execute all contracts for materials including costs of the alternatives, if deemed affordable. Second. Uh, any board comments or discussion? Yes. Um, I, I just have one comment. Um, trying to understand the uh, alternate selection and um, uh, to be determined affordable. Um, if, obviously, the board would be notified prior to um, making any of these payments that would come out of the affordable account, whatever that might be. Right, well, we're not gonna, yes, absolutely. We, uh, <clears throat> nothing will be, nothing will be without authorization of the board. Okay. What, what they did, what they did with this project, and I, and I oh. stopped it, was we bid, and Don, you were part of those discussions, right? We, we had bid materials uh, and uh, thought that it would be more cost effective purchase materials on the state bid and then deliver these materials to the contractors who have won the bids for the paving and for the, the stormwater installation and all that. It sounded great at first when we first thought about it. And then we thought about it a little bit more, right? And we said, well, wait a minute. If we're responsible for the materials and there's a hiccup in getting the materials to the site, then a contractor can say, well, wait a minute, you know, I've, I've got 14 people here, you're paying them. Right, whether the materials here or not. So we didn't think that when we rethought that, we didn't think that was a good idea. So on the what you'll find is, but we bid it out, and that's the way we did it on this first part of the project, all of us collectively. Uh, what you're going to find is when we bid the um, the highway garage itself, 
there will be one contractor, and that contractor will be responsible for uh, soup to nuts, right? So if there's a if there's a hiccup or some sort of disconnect, uh, the town will not be liable. The uh, they will. Mark, just yes, just sir. to clear, you know, we we did find that we needed because of the Wix law, we actually <coughs> have four contractors, uh, but the uh, and the architect is actually the one we hired in his fee uh, is where the coordination expense will come. It's already, we've already paid, for, I mean, we've had that bid from MRB. Right. Uh, but we tried to get it, because I was used to working for the state and having one major contract. We found that no, we need to do the Wix law, which means you've got to have those individual, uh, so we're going to have electrical, plumbing, um, fire protection, heating, valuing. The fire protection and plumbing are one contract, so it's, it's heating, valuing, plumbing, and electric, so we'll actually end up with four, four major contracts is what they call it. But they will be under the direction of a major one main contractor who's building the building? No, they'll be under the, they'll be under MRB's control. Okay. Yeah. We, we, that's what you and I were really concerned about, we needed control, right. and, and we have that. the guarantee that MRB is the controlling. Well, MRB exactly. would oversee the, the contractor, the general yes. contractor. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the clarifying. Thank you, Don. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other um, comments or board questions? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any objections um, or abstentions? We pass unanimous. We'll uh, now go to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, MS4 State Pollutant Discharge Eliminating System, which is a speedy system, permit annual report. And Steve Snell, would you like to talk to us about the MS4? Sure. Um, basically, this this is uh, an annual permit that the town uh, is required to comply with uh, per DEC regulation. And the permit outlines six minimum measures that need to be complied with. And each year we have to um, basically identify and describe all of the measures that the town is implementing to comply with those measures, include that in an annual report, and provide that report for uh, public comment. So basically we've, we've drafted that report. It's now being available for public comment and we'll address any comments and then submit it formally to the DC. Is that something that we'll put on the website for people to yes. view and see? Okay, right. thanks. We don't need any sort of resolution, it's just a, a uh, informational thing uh, on the other one. Uh, John? Move the adoption resolution to allow the homeowner, uh, 8344 Parker House Path, to use land co companies instead of the town's contractor to make a connection to the public sanitary sewer system for a new home to be built. At 8344 Parker House Path, subject to meeting the town's insurance requirements. Second, any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those nay. Any abstentions? We carry unanimously. Thank you. Move the adoption resolution to approve the following sanitary sewer repair work payable to DE Tiroli Incorporated 103 Marywood Drive and the amount of $8,475.09. In 5834 East Circle Drive, in front of Bank of America, in the amount of $8,121.19. Second. Uh, any board comments or discussion? Steve, anything you want to, I know Tiroli contacts you in the emergency situation. Yes, yes. Um, both of these were emergency repairs. Um, Mary would drive most of the lateral had to be replaced due to two issues that were out there. Um, made that a more of a significant repair. East Circle Drive, actually the, the line was damaged under East Circle Drive. Yeah. You ended up having to directional drill a new lateral all the way to the town's connection to, to the town's <coughs> sewer um, to allow them to connect to that line as well. That happened actually uh, over the winter months. We got them through until just recently, until this work completed. So, okay, thank you. Uh, any, um, did we have a second on that? Any further board discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? We pass unanimously. Thank you. I just wanted to, uh, well, I'll, I'll bring it up in discussion. <clears throat> Vern? Uh, move for the adoption of a resolution to appoint the following uh, part-time help, Austin Freeman, Devo Hastings, Bradley Pry, uh, as uh, seasoned highway laborers at a rate of $12 per hour, Effective 6418. 
contingent and passing the pre-employment fiscal. Second. Any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those nay. Any abstentions? We pass unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Move for the adoption of a resolution to approve the following purchases. 40800 to Apex Striping Incorporated for road striping service uh, for the town budget code number A33104. Second. Any board comments or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those nay. Any abstentions? We pass unanimously. <coughs> a couple things on discussion uh, items. Uh, with the board's permission, uh, our one of our county legislators, Tim Burtis, uh, and I had a conversation today. He has a concern, and some of the residents who live over near Gillette Road Elementary School uh, have a concern about traffic um, uh, next to the Dunkin' Donuts and, and uh, you know uh, Gillette Road dumps on to South Bay Road. South Bay Road is a county road, it's not a town road. And uh, Tim would like to pursue a stoplight there with Onondaga County DOT. However, Onondaga County DOT will not even look at it unless the board passes a resolution asking him to do that. So I'd like to inter uh, like in inject a, uh, a resolution that is not on the agenda if, uh, if the board will allow Before you do, um, did we do a traffic study on that? So we're not asking the county to put the light, we're asking the county to look into right. it, to look into light, it, right. and we're asking the county to do the traffic study. That's correct. Okay. I'm, I have no objection. Uh, I make a resolution asking the county of Onondaga to look into uh, installing a traffic control device uh, on the corner of Gillette Road and South Bay Road. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any, uh, excuse me, any abstentions? Pass unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, yes, sir. I think you should add to that that, uh, that, that specifically that the board is expressing support for a light there and authorizing the supervisor to send a letter to the county to that effect. Uh, you want to make the resolution? Okay. Well, I can't. We'll just, okay, one, you can. All right. So we will. Uh, one other thing, um, because the school buses are real close to that intersection as well, um, wouldn't that also? be a part of that? Shouldn't it be a part of that? Because the the exit for the school buses are, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, real close to that intersection. Yeah. It's also a very hard intersection to exit with snow plows. Yeah. I, I would think that the county, the Department of Transportation's traffic study would encompass right. looking okay. at that, I would think, right? So okay. uh, let me amend that resolution to read that uh, um, we will allow the supervisor to write a letter in support and that this board uh, supports a study by Onondaga County DOT to look at uh, installing a traffic control device. He suggested that we say that we support the light. Are we saying we support the light or we support the study, Mr. Chairman? You can say both. What the county really wants is an expression of support from the, from the local board. That's what they ask for. Then we'll, we'll amend it again. Thank you, you saying that the, the light traffic control device there would be helpful for your snow plows too? Very helpful. Good. All right. In that case, I support it. Not just the study, the actual light. Right, the actual light. So uh, we'll amend that again. Um, and ask Onondaga County um, to uh, look into installing a traffic control device at the corner of Gillette Road and South Bay Road and that the Cicero Town Board supports a light and a study, a traffic study to affect that. Second. Uh, any board discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any objections or uh, abstentions? I'm dying with these, uh, this allergy. Sorry. A couple things uh, before we go to public input. Um, some of you re may remember, uh, who have been around for a while, that we have, the town um, has an issue with Darlene's Brook. Darlene's Brook has culverts that run under East Circle Drive. Part of that is owned by the state. Part of that East Circle Drive is owned by uh, the town of Cicero. Uh, we've been negotiating, Steve uh, Snell has been with me, uh, negotiating with uh, DEC, Department of uh, Environmental Conservation, DOT, the Department of Transportation, and also the engineer who had the project uh, and currently has that project for the town and has for 10 years. Um, 
So we are very close to having permits issued and having that work actually happen this year uh, in September. And uh, they were talking about a September start date because I think there's some sort of bird that could possibly be effective, some of our species, so they'll put that off. But um, we're looking at having those, uh, those uh, culverts relined and having it done beginning in September. It's been a long 10-year process, but uh, we'll bring it to a close. This board will bring it to a close. And then uh, finally for me, um, this is very uncomfortable. Uh, we had a lot of folks in here last, uh, at the last board meeting. I've received letters and emails about the proposed project on Lake Shore Road. Uh, and I have held my <coughs> opinion close to the breast because I think there's an ethics issue uh, simply by the fact that I, being the supervisor of the town, uh, there's an ethics issue if I state an opinion and am seen as uh, unduly influencing an independent board. Uh, so I've held my uh, opinions and I've been asked by many people and I've not shared them with anyone except my wife, Mary Ellen, who's not here tonight. But as a, uh, as a public, um, as a resident of the town of Cicero, there's two things, and I promised you this when you elected me. Number one, I think that the town of Cicero uh, needs a tax base, and I've been a pro-business uh, supervisor, but I also promised that I would do all that I could to see that we have uh, guaranteed or um, considered the quality of life in our community. I have an issue with, uh, with, that, um, with that project. Uh, I have a couple issues, but I'll only share one. As a resident, not as the supervisor of the town of Cicero. Uh, I think there's a density issue with that project. Uh, and um, uh, I am not going to uh, ask, uh, the only thing I would say is, is I, I would count on and hope that the people making the decision make the right decision uh, when it comes to that project. Uh, that's all that I will say on that, but I think you can read into it. Thank you for saying that, Mr. Supervisor. I also came to the conclusion recently that it was not inappropriate to comment on that. I actually posted a statement on my um, Town Council Facebook page last night. I agree and share the Supervisor's concerns that the proposed density of this project uh, creates a significant risk of a very serious adverse effect on the quality of life of the residents surrounding it, not just in the immediate area, but up and down Lakeshore Road. And I am expressing this opinion as myself and as a Town Council, however, it is not my intent that this uh, opinion influence the Planning Board to take or refrain from taking any action. This is me simply stating my opinion. The, the Planning Board does have numerous options at its disposal, and I am confident that the members of the Planning Board will consider those options and elect. <coughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, at this point, I will um, open it up. I'm sorry? Can I? You may. Can I Second, please. Um, uh, so I've been approached by uh, Lake Shore Road people in regards to a different issue, and it is when you're coming from 31, turning right on to Lake Shore Spur, to turn on to Lake Shore Road, that the thing uh, around the dumpster area needs to be moved back. So anyway, and that, and I also support Tracy in regards to. The sound system, I am helping her as well. I have a couple of contacts. I've got the specs from her and have uh, reiterated that the amount of usage and uh, what it does for us in the town hall and for all the uh, people in this town to get the minutes and the clerk's office works so very hard on it that we definitely need a sound system and I'll do everything I can to help you. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, uh, will, uh, would anyone uh, like to approach the board? Yes. <laughs> no, I just want to, the, um, we've approved a number of things lately as it relates to the building, and I think we need to, to let you all know uh, what's going on with the, for example, the sewer project. We approved it. We had a contractor uh, sign contracts. We had a pre-construction meeting. We had a, a pre, uh, yeah, pre-construction meeting last week. We found out that the piping is a problem for delivery, and so it's not going to be the contractor's fault. Number one, we don't need the, the sewer installation 
tomorrow anyway. So if someone asks you, you know, I thought we approved the sewer going down 31, why aren't they doing it? Well, it's because it's really only going to be about a four week job uh, and the piping is at least six to eight weeks out. It's going to be a welded piping system, much like what they do with the gas lines. So it'll go in quick. Uh, they're obviously doing some directional drilling across some properties and under some roads, uh, but that's that's on its way. Um, the, uh, the committee that's working on this building are trying their hardest to get it out for bid by June 1. What we've told Mark is we will get it out as soon as possible, but we would rather wait a week longer to get it done right than to have a bunch of addendums go out. When addendums go out with a contract, the contractors start to get antsy. They say, what, what are these guys, what do they forget? And so, because it's a very complicated building, a lot of systems. We met with Chris and his staff on Monday. Uh, we've got that uh, together. Uh, we were all ready to have a meeting this week, but because the mechanical engineer is out of town, we are going to do it next week and schedule for either Wednesday or Thursday next week. We just got an email today. So that's moving ahead. So um, the site work guy, uh, there's a little bit of paperwork yet to sign, uh, insurance and stuff, but he'll be starting too. But so what we all need to pray for is no rain uh, because it's not very easy to move dirt around when you're doing it and it's called mud. We need dirt, not mud. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of, we'll try to keep you informed as we're going along. Um, it's going to be a great facility. Chris is going to have to live in his old building this year. He knows that. I think he knew it from day one. Yeah. Um, we're trying to keep him positive because uh, he really likes the year 2-0 as opposed to the year 1-9. We like the year 1-9. So we're pushing for 1-9. He would really like to have it in 1-9, <coughs> but being a very real kind of a guy, he thinks it might be too old, but we'll, we'll keep that on target. There you go. I, and I, I just I have to shout out uh, Don Snyder again. Don spends nearly as many hours here as I do. Um, I think I, I see you here more than anyone other than the regular staff. And I want to thank you for all the hours. You've seen me, you've seen him. I got Don, and I'll tell you, Don Bloss as well. Both these guys, sorry, Don. I've just done a, a bang up job with this. We have a lot of meetings, we have a lot of. Uh, talking about the building, but yes, we're, we, uh, the reality is, is we're going to spend another winter in that building uh, behind us. Um, that, that isn't going to change for all the reasons that you know and some that you don't. But we're going to make sure that we do this right. we got one shot, so uh, if it delays us a week or two, then that's what we're going to do in getting it out, but it will be done properly and done right. So thank you. Um, anyone else? Chief. Chief. I want to give uh, an update on the PD. Please do. Uh, Today, uh, we crossed the threshold. We moved our uh, donated furniture, about $70,000 worth of free furniture to the, to the town. Uh, moved that in today, get the building set up. Uh, our goal is right now is we still have uh, vendors over there working on the access security systems, the IT system, and the phone systems. Uh, we've been told that Monday afternoon, the phones will be cut over from the current facility to the new facility requiring our admin uh, clerks to move into it and uh, be open for business. This will be closed. And, uh, but our patrol operations will still be operating out of here as we've still got some minor construction to do for our booking area, our locker rooms, and, and areas like that for patrol. So we're looking at uh, the end of next week, by, actually by Friday, to have our entire operation operating out of the new facility. Uh, and I encourage Great. anybody who wants to come over and get a tour, please come over. Uh, I think it'll be important. <coughs> I know we have a retired trooper over here who may have worked out of that facility at one time, and I think he would be impressed if he saw yeah. it today. I'm anxious. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I, I, in, to kind of piggyback, I went through the building today, um, uh, this early afternoon. It's, it's beautiful. That, that is such a beautiful facility. And I can't tell you how proud I am. Um, and, and the folks here in the town of Cicero should be proud. I mean, we, we said we were going to move this town forward and Donovan we moved it forward. Uh, we're, we're not dodging any issues. We've come together. We needed a highway garage, we built it. We need a home for our police department, we didn't dodge it. And uh, thankfully, the state of New York paid for that building. Thank you. Uh, but that was a great negotiation. It was a lot of fun doing it. But um, when you look at that building, it's something we can all be proud of. The, uh, 
the sign out front, the signage, the offices, the, it, it's, it's just, I think, a real shot in the arm for this community and we need it. You're all going to be impressed in June 8th June is our dedication to the building. And we've got tentatively scheduled for June 30th June. as an open house for the community. For the community. And I would encourage But anyone here that wants a tour of it, just stop in after next Monday and be <laughs> more happy. Yeah, I, I'm a great tour guide for that new facility. Yeah, it's I'm great. It really uh, also, I want to give a, uh, a really uh, thanks to uh, Chris Wesnick and his people because they really worked hard to help us with some water issues we had. Uh, the Parks and Rec for stepping in and replacing a sump pump for us and yeah, mowing our yard for us at this point. Yeah. So uh, it's just really been a total time-wide uh, uh, project. Yeah. Appreciate everybody's help. Awesome. Awesome building. Thank you, Chief. Um, any anyone else before we close? There being none, I'll make uh, a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.